Well, we have some lightning likely on the way in the yeah. next couple of hours, but hopefully it won't spark any wildfires. We, a lot of moisture in the air, so mm -hmm. that does help. But when there are not, it's a problem. Yeah. yeah, there's some wildfires not too far away far. in parts of Montana and Wyoming, right. likely caused by lightning. I wanted to go into three specific impacts and dangers of lightning. Uh, I've talked about the science behind lightning, what causes it on previous Morse codes of weather. But this week, I wanted to discuss how it can impact farmers and ranchers, how it can start wildfires, and how lightning can damage oil sites. So first, starting off with general facts about lightning. Each year in the United States, more than 400 people are struck by lightning. In North Dakota, 12 people have died between the years of 1959 and 2017 from lightning strikes. So that's why we always emphasize when thunder roars go indoors, you don't want to be a part of that statistic. Over the uh, 10 year period from 2011 to 2020, we've only had one lightning related fatality. That's uh, good compared to some other states farther down south along the Gulf Coast where a lot more lightning related fatalities have happened. In North Dakota, the fatality happened on August 4th, 2019 in Richardson when a man was doing trail work. And of course, we want that statistic to be at zero. But here's the lightning density across the United States from intracloud, which is cloud uh, to cloud lightning. So a lightning strike just up at cloud level and cloud to ground lightning. So an actual strike impacting the ground. And you can see the density lot greater down along the Gulf Coast and parts of the central and southern plains. Where we, of course, see our fair share of lightning, though, in total, for intracloud and cloud to cloud strikes, 2.7 million total strikes just last year. That's 15.2 strikes per square kilometer. And just looking at those cloud to ground uh, strikes, the density, of course, a little bit more towards southeastern North Dakota than a lot more farther down to our south. But something that, of course, farmers and ranchers need to be keenly aware of even more so than the general population because they're out in fields and a lot of open areas might not be able to get to shelter as quickly but you need to have a plan in place if thunderstorms are in the forecast to get into a shelter when that thunder is on the horizon so a uh, recent story from May 28th of this year, lightning unfortunately killed a Colorado rancher and 34 cows. So the lightning that struck that man, he was feeding hay to cattle from the back of a trailer, knocked about 100 of the cows and calves off their feet, killing 34 of the cows and three calves. His wife was about 200 feet away when the lightning struck, knocking her off of her horse, and the bolt struck on a wide open pasture about 80 miles northwest of Denver. Just a reminder of the danger of lightning when you're out on a field doing ranching work like that. But also for crops, lightning can burn, let's, uh, for example, soybeans leading to their death. So soybean plants, this was a photo of them wilting as the result of lightning one day after a thunderstorm on July 27th, 2017 in Trenton, South Dakota. And then a few weeks later on August 11th, you can see the soybeans uh, have a lot more of a brown appearance. So the plants affected by the lightning have a black to dark brown discoloration and they may have kind of a scorched or burnt appearance to them and that can obviously have a big impact financially for farmers. So the heat and pressure waves generated by lightning can kill or damage plants instantaneously. The temperature of the air in the lightning channel can be up to 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit, five times hotter than the surface of the sun, burning plant cells and tissues leading to the wilting symptoms and other ones. So the heat energy that's produced by that lightning strike is produced in a millionth of a second, far too quick for the air around it to expand gradually, so that air quickly expands and propagates outward as a shock wave. And that pressure can cause the pith of uh, some plant stems to explode, can cause the immediate drop of fruits on those crops, and can split apart a tree trunk. That's why you never want to be under a tree when there is lightning in the area. Uh, and here's a photo of a patch of plants killed by lightning in a soybean field. So with farmers and ranchers, um, just having a properly designed lightning protection system can help to safeguard some structures, equipment, and trees by providing an easy path to the ground. The lightning tries to find that easiest path to discharge all the excess charge up at cloud levels. So putting lightning rods on buildings and silos, having a grounding rod for wire fences. 
So, because the lightning strike can obviously impact buildings and damage electrical equipment on farms as well. So now going into that next impact, wildfires. Wildfire causes from 1992 to 2020. The uh, blue color is wildfires caused by lightning, a little bit more common in the Rocky Mountains where it's a little bit less sparsely populated. For example, from the period 1992 to 2020, 40% of Utah's wildfires were known to be caused by humans, so 60% were caused by lightning, far lower than the national average of 85% of our nation's wildfires are caused by humans. That's in that orange color. For example, though, with fires that are caused by lightning, some recent ones that happened in Montana and Wyoming, the Remington fire, lightning was the cause of that one, and then the wind took that over to spread it rapidly on the Montana-Wyoming border, and the house straw fire was caused by a suspected lightning strike, and that rapidly grew in size, causing the closure of I-90 in Wyoming for some time. But in California, the record-setting 2020 season of wildfires uh, Ninety-five percent of them were human caused, so it varies by location and whether it's human caused or lightning caused, but something that can be a danger and impact of lightning strikes is these wildfires, and of course we've been dealing with smoke from fires in Canada, and an interesting graph here shows that humans cause a bit more wildfires in Canada earlier in the season than a bit more of that lightning activity happens in the summer and fall months, causing more wildfires in Canada. Then in Jasper, here's a before and after photo of the wildfire that damaged a decent chunk of that town earlier this year. Uh, but just having the dry and warm and drought conditions can provide the fuels for these fires if a lightning strikes that specific site. So Jasper, for example, once it became a national park, there was more fire suppression that happened. So with fewer fires as a part of the natural cycle, vegetation began to change. So in 1950, a large area of the park consisted of just patchy vegetation with grasslands and open forest, more deciduous trees. But 80 years later, half of the grasslands were gone, replaced by a thick forest. So without those natural processes of fire, because of fire suppression, dead trees and branches can build up on the forest floor, providing more fuel for larger, hotter blazes. Wildfires naturally create a patchier landscape that can actually benefit wildlife, but without fire, trees can continue to grow and persist, eventually creating ladder fuels so a fire on the forest floor can climb to the canopy of the trees rapidly. So uh, uh, knowing that you have good fire suppression is good for protecting towns, but you want to also have good uh, forest management so that these wildfires don't spread as rapidly. And then last thing with the oil wells and specifically with saltwater disposal units, since we have a lot of them, especially in the Bakken here in North Dakota, four lightning strikes on saltwater disposal units just in McKenzie County alone happened in 2019. And with the well pads, the central tank batteries, all the other things that you have on that site, there's more static electricity there drawing more lightning strikes to happen. And the, tank, the tanks themselves are made of fiberglass. So when a saltwater tank gets hit by lightning, a fire is likely to destroy the entire tank battery, spilling oil and produced water. And the lids themselves can fly off. So that's why North Dakota even uh, commissioned a study for how to mitigate some of these lightning strikes mm. on oil wells and saltwater disposal mm. sites to mitigate potential dangers and, and yeah. the losses and dis spills of oils and, wow. and produced water. So interesting impacts of lightning. Obviously, it's a danger. Once you hear that thunder, you want to seek shelter and just be mindful so and weather true. aware when thunderstorms yeah. are in the forecast. Winter wars go indoors. Good advice. We preach that all the time. Yes. Yep. Thanks, Jacob. Thank you very much.